Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us on a very special episode. So, yeah, I mean, let's introduce the episode. Yes, we are here to address the state of the WWE. We did this probably sometime around March, might have been before, or a little bit after Mania, I don't remember. But we just felt like it would be necessary to do kind of like the the middle half of 2019, where we kind of air our grievances, talk about the product, what they've been doing right, what they've been doing wrong. So yeah, uh, any sponsors? Brought to you by um, Starbucks coffee drinks uh, for when you want to, the taste of coffee, but uh, you really just want sugar. And you get the unsatisfying pleasure of the caffeine drainage afterwards. Yep. Kamish? Uh, this is also brought to you in part by the Anything Wrestling Podcast 1 Instagram page. Follow, like, subscribe. And with that, you can enjoy all your favorite WWE programming, uh, but not really this year's King of the Ring because it's not worth watching. Only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. $9.99. It's not $10. It's not $1,000. Not one million dollars. <laughs> money, money, money. Oh, uh, no. Money. I thought that was the point of the line. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. Okay. (laughs) But? But. (laughs) $9.99. I mean, should we start off with King of the Ring? Uh, I guess we will. Um, Why am I here then? I'm trying to find out exactly what the last state of address, but go ahead. um, Here's the thing. I'm not so much as salty for them not pushing Cesaro. Uh, uh, wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. You can finish, but yet yeah, I try to start and I get cut. But Beyonce yeah, but he's not one salty. of the greatest albums of all time. Thank you, Kanye West. So when my boy, as the commissioner says, lost, I had faith that they would push someone else who could be a little bit more credible. Like a Drew McIntyre. Or I was even thinking if Samoa Joe wins the King of the Ring... That'd and be he cool. still has a chance. Uh, we know who's winning. Um, Where am I speaking then? They've just dropped the ball. Like, I mean, I'll tie in something that's unrelated, but it's like the, this could this could have been like the the heel turn of the century. But Bailey's heel turn last night. She literally swings that chair. Thirty seconds later, that logo comes up on the lower right hand of the screen. Oh, Monday Night Raw's over, and it's like really. We're, we're, that, that's that's how we're doing it. Uh, by the way, to, not to interrupt you because I'm politely letting you know. Uh, it was two weeks after uh, Mania. Mania, okay. the first state of address. So essentially, after big pay per view. Cool. So, You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, yeah, but that's just the uh, that's me, guys. Okay, I, I'm gonna ask this because I know this is the the one place where you're taking you a survey. No, I'm just gonna ask you. Why are you being Dan. so? What? Why are you being? Why are so... you interrupting me? I'm just gonna cut right into cutting him I, off. I was gonna lead back to you because I didn't know where you were going with. This. No, because he's starting. <laughs> To push my buttons on purpose with this. So I'm just going to ask him directly. Why do you have to be so salty about this? Why do you have to be so aggro about one guy not getting the push on a tournament that hasn't been relevant since, uh, what? 2002? No. Who was the last king? Barrett. Okay. What year was that? 2015. So four years ago. And before that? 2002. No. What? When was Seamus King? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. That's uh, the point. That, that, that was the point I was literally just throwing at you. I don't know if he saw it, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. you you're, you're getting so upset about a set of matches and a championship coronation, because that's what it technically is. When no one's getting their way. You clearly are not getting your way as of the first round. I didn't get my way after the quarterfinal round. Who are you? Who are you? Drew. Oh. 
Dan, you? When? This yeah. one? <laughs> Sorry, I was looking up the King of the Ring dates because y'all got me confused. Oh. But that's the point I'm trying to prove to you. This King of the Ring thing has become so irrelevant that you can't even remember the last two kings. And even before that, can you remember who that is? And don't say 2002 again. 2002. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to make a point to you. But I'm not. I'm not trying to argue with you about it. I'm not trying to like upset you about. It. I'm trying to tell you that. No, I understand. I, but I mean, I mean, officially, I'm here. It's 2015 to 2002. <laughs> yeah, but they still recognize <laughs> Seamus as a king, though. That's the yeah. problem. Seamus was 2010. Yeah, yeah but no, he's I, saying officially uh, on, on like the paper Wikipedia, on the Wikipedia page, oh. it jumps from 2015 to 2002. on digital <laughs> internet paper that can be modified, erased. But wouldn't you argue that this was a great opportunity? Because we always talk, like they always talk about it's a, always a great opportunity, and then they drop the ball. Well, see that that's that, that's my point is that you know people like Cody have gone on record to say, oh, you go to creative, they go, oh, creative has nothing for you. King of the Ring, as we've talked about, has always been a great opportunity to push someone. Look at all the previous King of the Ring winners, and it's like, okay, we bring back King of the Ring, awesome, great. There's all the, there's all this hype around it. But then you start pushing people like Corbin, who we've told them for months we do not want to see pushed. And even after Cesaro lost, I'm like, okay, maybe we can give it to Drew. No. Um, so that's just where my frustration lies. Like, okay, if it couldn't be Cesaro, maybe we can give it to a Drew. Or who else was in the tournament? <sighs> Miz. Uh, sh- I almost said Seamus. <laughs> Seamus hasn't even been on TV due to injury. That's true. His career might be over. He might be a referee. Um, (laughs) He's Slater? Yeah. He got kids. Who does Does he? Does Seamus have kids? Seamus has a son or two, doesn't he? Does he? Thought so. Anyway, not important. Moving forward. Or this Um, guy. Oh, Jesus. Buddy Murphy. All right. I'm going to name all 16. Cesaro, Samoa Joe, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Cedric Alexander, Sami Zayn, The Miz, Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens, Elias, Ali, Buddy Murphy, Chad Gable, Sheldon Benjamin, <laughs> Paul Cruz, Andrade. Uh, Sami Zayn was another one. Oh, so, okay. Didn't, didn't Sami losing, though, catalyst him into working with Shinsuke? Shinsuke. Yeah, it makes it work. I kind of like that dynamic for some reason. I guess. I mean, I don't know where they're going, and it, it has a certain familiarity to it. To Shinsuke previous... has a mouthpiece now. Yeah. Literally. And the one in his mouth. <laughs> hey, you get it? Because, like... You got the mouthpiece. Yeah, I got it. Um, Play on words. Anyway. Wordplay. Um, no, I mean, I would have preferred that we go sort of like... Uh, medieval Scottish king with McIntyre as the ultimate winner. King Drew. Um, Scottish sci-fi. Yeah, because it would you could have added an extra di- like extra dynamic, or you could have given him some co- some cool wardrobe, and then had him be like the dominant the dominant. Yeah. Like king. have him be even bigger than what King Bagat ever was. That that's no, you can like think about it. You you deck him out in this royalty gimmick. But on top of that, he proves it by ruling with an iron fist over yeah. the WWE, apparently. And also, drawing back the attention of a supposed rivalry we were supposed to get up until WrestleMania, which is him versus The Undertaker. Oh, yeah, that's going on. It's not going on because he's been eliminated. So, he's been pushed back to irrelevancy. I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to, I'm going to name you most, if I can remember most, if not all the kings of the ring. And where their careers went after they won it. Bret Hart, 93, I believe. Yes, I believe that was him. What happened to him? Feud with Jerry Lawler. But eventually became what? WWE champion. Okay, 94. (laughs) Is that Mabel? Uh, No, that's uh, 95. 94 was the uh, King of Hearts, his brother. Owen Hart. What happened? Uh, what, what? Constant opportunities to face his brother for the belt, but they never put it on him. Never put it on him. 95. King Mabel. (sniffs) Just practically almost killed The Undertaker, but that's it. His fucking... Oh, no. No, that was Kama who melted the urn for the chain. (laughs) So nothing happened with Mabel. 96. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin. What was born that day? Austin 316. 
eventually a year and a half after the fact yeah. what happened won the Royal Rumble title won, opportunities Intercontinental Championship broken neck so he had he had good leeway yeah 97 Triple H Triple H uh, that's an interesting one uh, what had happened to him before well the click incident and he was punished he for was, months on end up until that point finally gets King of the Ring Pretty soon forms DX, title opportunities. I mean, takes over after Sean um, got injured. All right, 98. I think it was what? Ken Shamrock it was the <laughs> king of the ring? Maybe. So one face. But do you see at that point, it was face 93, heel 94, heel 95, heel, heel 96, 96, heel 97, face 98. So... Every time there's a face king of the ring, it becomes completely like, uh, nobody gives a shit. But, obviously with those heels, they either became something or they were given enough opportunity, but they just couldn't go above. Except the, the exception of Triple H and Austin. Uh, what, not, who was 99? Billy Gunn. Alright, uh, after Badass. Uh, Curtis Angle. I mean, that was like momentum. He was already been given he was already everything. champion. But he's been given almost everything at that point. But he made it work. He needed to. 2001. Edge. Yep. No, that, that was a jump off point for Edge because he had already been tag team champion It took times. a second, though. No, but it, it still, he had started being a, a singles competitor that deserved a lot coming his way. <laughs> oh, two. Brock! Jesus. I think he purposely just yeah. chicken bone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're not offering chicken. Lesnar. Oh three? No. Uh, it didn't it. exist till okay. six. <laughs> King Booker. Two thousand six. King Booker. Followed by one that uh, I think we all would have liked to have seen turn into something. Uh, in two thousand eight, William Regal. Oh, wasn't he Lord. referring to himself as Lord Regal at that point? Or Maybe. Stephen Regal. He might have been. Uh, followed by Shamus. And 10. And then... You know, the main, main attraction from uh, SeaWorld. Uh, and then... Uh, little SeaWorld kids. <laughs> Blackfish. Um, and then Bad News Barrett. That was uh, another tw- one. 2015. Uh, but I'm Barrett. afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> Get it? Shortly thereafter, he hit the road. We, we, miss, came back. we miss you, Stu. After 06, it literally became irrelevant as hell. And it's like, you don't do much with it. You're not giving... What are you... Okay, at this point, what are you giving with it? A universal toss up? <laughs> Build up. Of what? Momentum. For what? A push. In this current day? Yeah, you s- exactly. Not really. Um, why am I here? I mean, okay. Here, here's another one. Bailey's heel turn. What do we think about that? All right. So, by the way, we're done with the King of the Ring talk. Uh, cheap way to realign the two of them together because, of course, as Corey says, Bailey can't do anything without Basha things. Except win a world championship, but yeah. um, I don't really know where they're going with it, unless um, they just want a heel champion, or if they're gonna try and turn Charlotte back to a face. Uh-huh. Um, I kind of thought of this yesterday, and maybe it is a premonition of something that we all want. Maybe the reason why they made Bailey turn heel is to have those two realign themselves. So. Charlotte can turn face to realign herself with Becky because I'm pretty sure Becky's not done with Bailey. Because then you sort of got the two odd couples at this point because you had the you had the good girl Bailey who now is like, well, I guess I'll be bad with my best good girl friend. Gone bad. And then Charlotte might be I think we've kind of joked about this before the whole nobody nobody fucks with you except for me. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is it's like you can twist it in a way where it's like Charlotte's still like, oh, I don't care. It's all about me, but I do need an ace up my sleeve mm. with Becky. 
And then you get these two going up against the other two, just with collusion of who's the better of the four. And then for some odd reason, you get an annoying mouse rat, raccoon, bluebird, red wing, kabuki, spider web, video game fuckface. Wow, he who's... actually remembered it. And he, I think he, I... he was practicing. No, I, I <laughs> this is the first time I said it in a long time. Actually. Very smooth. I'll give you credit. Um, coming back out of nowhere, just either cutting a horrible promo because she doesn't know how to promo still, or doesn't even speak. Something I would want her to do. Not speak. Shut the fuck up. Just like stand at the apron, watch them have like a tag match, and then out of nowhere you see the other three from NXT just attack all of them. But that's the whole thing I can think of. That I think that's the only way you can make this four versus four happen finally. Is the fact that you have the original four of the WWE have conflict within each other to unite them at one point. And right now, we're in September, heading into November. And I think that's the only way that this is going to work. But that means WWE has to have enough of uh, confidence in the other three. Yeah. Well, We've talked about how Shayna, Shayna's great. Uh, the, the other two, Jessamine and Marina, are just there. Yeah, they're, they're still bland. But then again... Blank I mean, noise. you've got two two at the forefront with more charisma and uh, star power. Or one with all the charisma and star power, and the other one is just... There we go. He's never going to um, give that one credit. You can't even give her more credit than Marina and Jasmine. <laughs> Seriously, no. I'm probably on Marina and Jasmine's uh, worst day. They can probably do better than Raccoon. <laughs> My God, that just sounds like bitterness. Um. Anyway, yes, queen, yes, yes. Queen. Uh, <laughs> But that's that's the only way I see this heel turn working because there there had there's always the long haul with McMahon, and I think the only way that he could really salvage anything because I think everyone's been wanting to see it. Everyone's been wanting to see this who's the better dominant four horsewomen group overall. It's just taken a while to finally align everybody in because Crybaby uh, Blue Hair over there had to wind her way back into the WWE. There we go. What? Okay, am I wrong? She wind her way back after four or five months. I'm pretty sure she the vacation she took... Was her, like, for the first month and a half or two, crying to Vince about why didn't I get to headline WrestleMania? Why Damn. didn't I lose my tag team Why titles? didn't I get to headline WrestleMania? Why <laughs> didn't I get to keep my tag team titles? Why, um, why yeah, does that, Bailey get and, to have a and championship? That was a, and that was a weird promo when she was like, yeah, I went, or she goes, I went home and I, and I or I threw a tantrum after I lost the tag team titles. Yeah, I did, and it's like okay. So you admit you just exactly seem exactly like what we knew you were gonna do. You just sound like a brat. She admitted it. <laughs> yeah, but it's I don't give becoming a, I don't, of her that she has to admit she's a brat. I don't like, give why a can brat it, more credit for admitting they're a brat. They're still a brat. <laughs> I rather her have been like, you know what? I messed up. I left. I left to come back stronger. Could have cut her promo differently. No, she just sounded whiny and complaining the whole time. Well, that's she prob- still sounds whiny. Hell, the fact that Michael Cole, Michael freaking Cole checked her about no one cares about your blue hair. That to me stood out as like, okay, get over yourself. Get over the hype of yourself. Come back as an actual like competitor. Don't come back as a crybaby who thinks they deserve the world when they haven't done a thing to earn it. Well, recently. you got to keep in mind this is not it's not Sasha's promo, it's Booking's promo. I don't care. If she's been given the world now, she could have done a hell of a better job. I still think she can. Cuz after Natalia, I'm like, okay, who do you give Becky Lynch now? Who's credible? The idiot no, have? I'm calling Sasha the idiot. Oh. Again, she cried her way off of WrestleMania. She admitted it to the world, and it's like, shouldn't you want to admit something else? I still love Sasha. It's possible that Only the, you. It's possible that the promo was sort of Stupid. a management's way of, like, punishing her and being like, you're going to go out there, 
and you're going to own up to all your bullshit, and then we'll move forward. You can have your fucking title match, you little bitch. (laughs) Um, But do you see, that's the problem, is trying to make every single person on the roster talk. That that's not the issue. That's the issue. For you it is. My issue is that the fact that when you don't get your way, you have to act like a brat and leave. You have to threaten your company by cutting all ties on your social media, being whiny. You have to take an extended vacation when you know there's a certain time you're going to get vacation time. Like, come on. She honestly could have done a way better job Here's about the her issues with the WWE. Bailey said something where she said, "Okay, Sasha walked out." That in her at the time, that was what was right for her. And as of recent, I went back and I watched the whole thing where Steve Austin walked out on the WWE. And to this day, he says, "You know what? It was wrong. Shouldn't have done it. But at the place that I was at the time, that's what I felt like I wanted to do." You just compare Stone Cold Steve Austin to no. Boston? I'm not comparing Stone Cold. You I'm, did. I'm comparing the scenario that they both went through. Because here, one one was legitimately could have been paralyzed at one point. What is this one dealing no, no, no. with? Austin didn't leave Why because of being paralyzed. Austin left because of creative. Yeah, but. At the time, this was an issue. It what issue, issue did she have? That was her an hair? issue, but that wasn't the reason why he walked I out. I understand that, but I'm trying to tell you, though. Two different people, two different circumstances. I know, and both of them felt like the only way that they can handle their situation is by walking out. I'm not saying it was right. It's not the best way to handle things. I understand that, but at the same time, though, I would give more credit for his walkout than I will hers. Because... She still has the ability to continue her career. He didn't at that point. And on top of that, he was dealing with a lot more. When it first happened, I like I said my piece on here that I was like, just just go. Like if you're not happy, if this is I think for me, it's not quite the same. Because everything we'd heard was she was she was pissy. And I'm going to go with that. She was pissy. That she and Bailey were told you're gonna have to drop the tag belts to the Iconics, and she went, but why? And then left or didn't answer calls or said I'm not coming in until I need some time to myself. And then she went off and, like you said, kind of did said, all her you, social media. You saw shit. All, the, all her the, ties. And um, I just at at a certain point, like two months in, I was like, I'm over your bullshit, man. Go to fucking AEW if you're going to sit and complain. Go to Ring of Honor. Go to New Japan. Your job. And I know not everybody's happy with having to do their job sometimes, especially the ones with the ego. Um, Your job is to shit. Like, Dolph said it best. Uh, I don't remember the exact quote, but he essentially said, I show up, I do my job, and I go home. WWE tells me what to do, and I, I do what they tell me to do. I think someone else said that, too. Yeah. Like... About a month and a half ago, recently. Yeah, Tyler Breeze. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was Breeze. Maybe it was no, Breeze. No, but Dolph was... also said something along those lines yeah. because while he was gone for a while, he even admitted, like, "Look, yes, I'm not in the WWE right now. I'm doing my own thing, but I know I still have my job. I know I have responsibilities to maintain, and I have phone calls to answer and all that." Like uh, this should almost be a humbling experience for somebody like her. To like for WWE to be like, okay, go. Like I, I would love if it came out that Triple H or Vince himself was like, we don't need you. You can go have some time off. We don't need you. If you want to come back and and play ball, you have four months to figure your shit out. But we're not gonna wait wait past that. Then you can go somewhere else, but we don't need you. What did we not know about this? How did we know that if she didn't do what she did, she would have been given the opportunity back as a singles competitor to win Money in the Bank? She would have been the one holding the SmackDown Championship and not Bailey. We didn't know that. Why? Because the minute she was told, you two have to drop your belts, being the first tag team, cried about it. Complained about it through a tantrum. What did Bailey do? She upset, cried a little, accepted it. Oh crap! I'm in Money and in the she Bank. Got the push. <laughs> I'm cashing in that same night. I'm now the SmackDown champion. I've held this belt longer than a month, month and a half, 
and I didn't sell myself to the blonde John Cena. I didn't sell myself to blonde Cena. Here's my thing. I get all that, but I feel like out of the two, Bailey would have less to complain about. Because we've all talked about this before, where they would dangle a carrot in front of Sasha. Okay, she got it, but then they would quickly yank it away. And it wasn't a one-year thing. It wasn't a two-year thing. It was from her main roster push to now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Did you not hear the promo yesterday? Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's not really Sasha. That's creative. I'm not talking about Sasha. Ta- then I'm talking about what Becky said. She was given the world. When? All the time. Come on. I, I, I don't s- agree. I'm sorry. I don't. What do you not agree with? Was the she, fact that Sasha wasn't at WrestleMania four times more well, than Becky the was. Well, okay. The fact that Sasha had her opportunities. Look, the fa- look you're trying to tell me look, to feel sh- sorry here's, for someone. No, I'm not asking you to feel sorry. I'm asking you to give credit. I'm asking you to understand. Understand what? That look, you, you guys cry, know, you 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 guys know I room? hate raccoons' guts. You know this. But I will give her credit. She gave us a great WrestleMania match, and she had a great match with Nia Jax at Money in the Bank. I give her credit. So you don't give her credit for SummerSlam? You don't give her credit for Hell in a Cell? Was it a good match? It doesn't matter. She still contributed. She still played ball even though... And you're telling me Sasha hasn't? Um, Sasha is WWE born and bred. Sasha is one of their best players. And yet, she was given everything first and still She was given any, everything in NXT. When she came to the main roster, what was she given? One, like, 30-day title reigns? That was she taken away? It. Come on, at this point... I'll count, I'm going to counterpoint real quick. So is Dolph. And Dolph still shows up to work. Exactly. And Dolph hasn't been frustrated? I'm sure he has, but he understands Everyone's the role been the frustrated. his job. That's the point I'm trying to get to you. You can't get frustrated and cry about it. You still have to show up to work. At one point, with her being gone, they were like, you know what? We're not going to wait anymore. We can't wait anymore. We have events to keep going with. We have things we need to do. If she was a part of the bigger plan that they wanted after WrestleMania, She's like I said, coach. exactly. My problem with her comparing her to Stone Cold is two different circumstances of two different people who did the same thing. They both walked out, but one still had an opportunity to come back, while the other one was at a point in his career where it could have gone either way. Yes, he did something wrong. Yes, he shouldn't have done it the way he did it. He should have been more vocal and honest, but not in the way he was vocal and honest. Her, on the other hand... Everything she did after WrestleMania was childish. I'm sorry. It's childish of you to complain and cry and bitch and leave. And to hold your company by the throat. And it's like, all right, let's just forget about you. Give you what you want. Take your vacation. Take the time to relax. Take the time to do whatever the hell you want. Reinvent yourself. Recreate yourself. Do whatever you need to. But you eventually have to come back to work. Him, on the other hand, you are the number one name everywhere in the world. Are you going to come back? No? Fine. I have six other guys I can push right about now. And hell, three of those guys told them, you want to take your ball and go home? Go ahead. We're going to stay. Granted, one of those guys decided, I want Hollywood more. Granted, the other one said, I'm going to bury everyone in front of me. But yet, I'm going to pay my dues later on. Triple H? Oh. Who was the other one? Uh, The one with an even bigger shovel who now wants to be just like Dwayne. (laughs) But do you see my point? They're two different people with two different circumstances. So I don't feel sorry for her. I don't like... I've told you, I yeah, don't like yeah, her. Yeah. I don't like how snotty she is about things. And what she did was very unforgivable. And it still will be to me until this day. We can agree. But the main disagree. point, because I think we completely derailed, this was a cop out for Bailey. This was like, okay, this is the only way you can ever turn heel. 
I would kind of twist it around even further that they continue their little heel process tonight on SmackDown, but then out of nowhere she turns on Sasha as well. <laughs> but it's like, you know what? I'm bigger than you now. I'm better than you. And I'm going to prove it by beating Charlotte, and then I'll challenge you, and I'll beat you. Who better than Sasha? Austin. Uh, uh, Bailey. Becky. Canyon. Charlotte. Canyon. The whole roster. <laughs> Canyon. It's just a repeat Canyon over and over at that DDP. point. Repeat Canyon. <laughs> uh, Good times. All right, so in summary so far, King of the Ring, useless. Yeah. Sasha, uh, we're divided as to where we feel. Um, what next? World champions. How do we feel about the plot lines going with uh, FTRKO and... Uh, what, what does that stand for? It's, I mean, it's like rated RKO. It's for Randy and the Revival. No, what's the FT stand for? Are you just trying to get us to say it? I, I don't... Is it supposed to be Fear the Revival? What are you doing, man? I'm dribbling. <laughs> is that what FTR is supposed to be? Is it supposed to be Fear know. the Revival? Because I don't think they would have their own hashtag be Fuck the Revival. <laughs> That'd be kind of odd. I, I'm serious. I don't, I don't know what... It, I, I don't I, I know. I know what the RKO it, is. I saw it like recently, and I was like, what does it mean? Yeah, I mean, it's just fusing the hashtag F, FTR and RKO together. So, I mean, it's just a team name. Yeah. Um, and the Seth Braun OC um, du- dudes out of the 1980s, uh, the feud that's going on. Um, Which oh, will... Forever the Revival. Is that what that is? That's what it is, FTR. That's stupid. Forever the RKO. I okay. I guess. It's dumb. It's pointless. I okay. I find this pairing of those three very weird. Okay, I don't so we're f- talking about that one first. WWE yeah. Championship. I find it as a desperate attempt to keep the talent that, when their contract is up, is most likely going to walk. When out is their company. When is their contract up? The revivals. I don't know. Because if you notice with Gallows, Anderson, Revival, it's like all of a sudden they're getting all this TV time. No, but Gallows and Anderson's resigned for like. Five years, though. They must have taken some convincing, I'll tell you. Well, they were probably told you guys can finally be the, be the club. Um, club. Club, club. Um, so, for FT, FTRKO and The New Day, uh, I mean... It's an odd pairing, but it's like we're barely getting the Kofi Kingston that we finally Yeah, and I, I, and I feel like we haven't really delved in... I feel like the whole draw... Of have bringing these two back together was to kind of revisit the original feud, see that more intense side of Kofi, um, and get, who else hmm? to bring it out but Randy? Yeah, and to to kind of get that conclusion that we never got in the first place, yeah. and I just feel like they haven't really done that, and I I think that bringing in uh, the uh, revival and the new day and, and the new day is watering it down it's kind of tamper it's ruining the flavor of the feud because it's making it again no offense to new day it's making another kofi kingston wwe championship feud about tag teams yeah and we don't need that like at one point i kind of really want to see kofi be like i don't need your guys' help but the problem with that is you can't Put him against no, I a, get that. a team, his own, and, team. and then have him. Well, you, I mean, you can't have you can't have him in the midst. It has to be that way from the start. You can't have him in the midst of fighting three guys and then be like, "Look, Xavier, Big E, I don't need y'all." But you getting his do. ass whooped, getting his but ass kicked. But you do at this point. Yeah. When it was just Randy, uh, that's what I was hoping yeah. we were going to yeah. get. Was just clean cut these two, that's it. Um, like, I'm still waiting for the day that, like, Kofi beats the hell out of Randy and literally throws the stupid, stupid. Throw some, at, pain. Ooh, throw some pain on him. Just like I mean, the one thing, Yeah, but this time on Randy, though. 
Like, it would set Randy off, but it would be something we haven't seen out of Randy in a while. Yeah. Like, the true apex predator that he is. It's just... I, I don't... Yeah, I agree with, with Dan. I don't like where this is going that it involves tag teams. Because it's like, again, we get something we finally want out of Kofi. No, let's bring it back. Let's make it childish still. Let's, let, let's keep it, like, PG. As much as we can. Honestly, I would have been up for starting the Randy and Kofi feud much earlier and then culminating it at SummerSlam because yeah. they did the same thing last year with AJ and Joe. It's like, that's the match that we're leading up to, to, to SummerSlam. Oh, it ends in a disqualification. Randy. Okay. Um, maybe Hell in a Cell is when we get the climactic conclusion. I don't know. Um, but, but it needs to end on like a really defining moment. And... Do you give Randy a, f- what, 14th championship? Yeah. We're going to have two people break Ric Flair's record. Right? Well, what, we have... One's a female, one's a male? You're talking about M- Madam Flair? No, Blonde Cena. Yeah, Madam Flair. Madam Flair. Um, he just wants to say Blonde Cena. Blonde Cena. Blonde Cena. Uh, <laughs> um, and then what about Universal Championship? Because I'm... Uh. It, well, here's here's what I'm gonna do. Y'all watch Firefly Funhouse. Yeah, I think that, but they kind of spoiled that even before that. Yeah, well, I think that was like a generic online rumor originally, was it not? Is that the oh well, the fiend might challenge one of these two? Did he officially challenge one of them on television? I think the puppet said that he did. But you're talking you're talking yesterday. Yeah. I am saying before that, had he done it on television? No. no. Okay, because I, I think the name of the video, when you look at it on YouTube, is Bray Wyatt addresses internet rumors. Okay. And, he addresses every rumor. And, and I like that. Symbolically, like, though. None, some others, he's like direct, like, stop making up rumors. Like, that's not what's happening. Um, like, the whole thing of, like, uh, PGing his fiend character, he's like, no. I never said I was doing that. Stop that. Uh, like, he shut that down immediately. Shut that shit down. Um, Burn it down. I honestly... I don't have a problem with the idea of... At... Um, whatever the fuck this show is. <laughs> you've got... Um, Clash, of Clash of Champions. And so, I think that's a great way to, to actually have The Fiend come in and kind of fuck things up. Because we already know you're going to have two, those two fighting two matches that night. It's going to be the tag match where I, I want them to lose. I think they should lose. Who are they fighting? Dolph and, and Robert? Robert. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. Oh, sorry. I'm Rick. Sorry. We're I called Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Rick. Uh, ravishing. Ravishing. Uh, Robert. Robert. Rude. R R R. And so... Um, I think they should lose the tag belts, and I think you should have the the match, and I think at some point, The Fiend comes out during the match, and it goes to a no contest, but he just decimates both of them. But here's the thing, you still... I want to see him hit Braun with a goddamn Uranagi. <laughs> here's the thing, you still have the annoyance of AJ, and like, even yesterday when he came out to interrupt the contract signing, I'm like... You already have a belt. Why are you trying to be two belts? Like, I get Styles it. two belts. Like, I get it. You're trying to... And he said it already. WWE is his final... Destination. Destination. Rest it's that big contract he signed. That's it. After he's done, he's retired. He's running off in the sunset. But don't end it like that with wanting two championships. Mm. I like where he's going with the thing with the OC. I like it. I like that Anderson and Gallows are back on TV. Yeah. I, this whole thing of them all being heels, perfect. Bring Finn back into yeah, the mix. If you say. bring Finn back, at least you build something up with the club. Yeah. As far as what you want, I would twist it in this way. I would have AJ interfere in the match even though it doesn't disqualify anybody. Let's just say the ref is took a bump. Even though these refs look like they can take a bump. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, oh man. I'm um, unconscious. Time even though I'm now. watching everything. <laughs> and you have AJ hit a uh, phenomenal forearm on 
Braun. On Braun. But it doesn't do much. Then you can have the Fiend come out out of nowhere, decimate both Seth and uh, Braun. And then I'm out just, of, go ahead. And then out of nowhere, the way the Fiend disappears, the referee gets back up, he sits both down like, all right, well, one, two, three, three, three ten. Nobody wins. Like, the, and you can even have AJ somewhere decimated as well. Like, the Fiend took care of all three. Yeah. I wouldn't even have an issue with having it be a fatal four-way inside a Hell in a Cell with Ooh. the Fiend between all four of those guys. Because right now you're supposed to make the Fiend seem, like, powerful and a big no deal. one can stop yeah. him. I'm imagining the pop. If you're in the middle of this hotly contested match, and all of a sudden... Vroom, 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 as the lights start to shut off. And then you hear the the screams thing, yeah. and suddenly the fiend is there. Um, I feel like it, I feel like you wouldn't want to do it the that way. I, I feel like you wouldn't want to do the mandible claw thing. So you could probably just lights off, and then when the lights came back on, and the fiend is standing in the middle of the ring, everybody's laid out. He's holding the belt. Eh, I'd, you can I take would want I would want to see him. Beat, you, you want beat him you up. want to see the beating? Okay. Um, but I, would I want think, to see I think take the belt. But I think he goes <laughs> lights out, and then lights <laughs> come back up, and the fiend is standing in the ring. And you could even have him already have Seth in Sister Abigail, have him hit that, and then he just has to kill the other two. But but you can kind of see some weird conflict when he's trying to go after Braun, just right? Because there's that have... whole. He does the the hand thing and then and then he splashes Braun and Braun's like, Oh god, what is this power? <laughs> oh god. But you have to make Braun look weak, even though it's, Yeah. It's you, hard you've gotta to bury the three of them in that segment and I don't have but a I problem think with that. He, that. Okay. To really make it work, I think AJ has to be laid out already. Like he already did work when the lights went I out. I think that's how you could do it, is you could have uh like it could be AJ hit, like hits the forearm or something, and he's like slinking away up the ramp, and boom, that's when the lights go out. When the lights come back on, he's behind AJ. He knocks him out, or he's already knocked him out, and he's just standing over him, staring. And you have you get you could do that moment. That'd be really cool. Is the cameras on the fiend, and he's looking down at AJ, and he just goes, and he looks straight up at Seth in the ring because with that mask and those yellow eyes, yeah, it's fucking it. unsettling. Yeah. It's really creepy. I mean, you <laughs> just have Seth just standing there like, I can't move. Like, he's just paralyzed by, like, yeah. what happens to me now. Do you have so, you finally have so much building up with this Universal Championship involving The Fiend or... I mean, Steve Austin is a part of it next week. Yeah. It's kind of really rare and odd. Which rumor? that might even tie into The Fiend because it's another rumor. Legend. Yeah, rumor is that Austin's coming back to take a hit from The Fiend. But then again, see, that spoils it for Sunday. No, because at the same time it, it's like you you can still wonder if he really is going to come after someone or not. Cause you, you could hold off till after the contract signing and then Austin's in the ring alone and he's like, oh, let's get a beer. Blah, 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 blah. And then The Fiend shows up. You keep them kind of as separate thoughts. But, I don't know. I like it. I like the idea of, of getting Bray up there already. And would we'll you give Bray the belt at Hell in a Cell? And that's what it comes down to. No, but like, that, Mike, what do you give him the belt? That's what I'm saying. That's, that's like the ultimate question. Do you give the fiend the belt? I would say if you don't want to give him the belt, like I kept saying, have him kidnap the championship. Keep Seth as your champion, but find a way where Seth has to go to the fun house. That's what I was like, thinking. I want someone to try to break into the fun house and be terrified in there. Whether it's Seth or someone as strong as Braun, but is shown to be weak. Yeah. Or you can even have AJ and the club go be like, you know what? You took out our boy in Finn, so we're going to do him the favor. Even though he wants nothing to do with us, we'll take care of it. Even, and they're unsuccessful as well. That's one way also you can tie Finn back into the club. Because honestly, I think I would like to see Finn as a heel. 
with the club. It would be refreshing. There's so much you can do now, finally, that Paul Heyman has control of Raw. It's just, with SmackDown, it's a little harder because I think Eric is still trying to find what do I do with who and with what? Because he has the tower, and I think he's focusing his intention, unfortunately, on this whole Roman and Daniel Bryan and Rowan thing. Okay, what's going on with that? I don't, I don't get it. it. It's a mess. It's a cluster. Like that, it was supposed to culminate at SummerSlam, but all of a sudden it got scrapped. And I mean, the reveal could have been like a big deal. Like, okay, who would you have wanted it to be? Okay, this is just kind of going back to an idea that I had before. I thought it would be cool if they do the face reveal and it's Luke Harper. And you kind of have a pre-WrestleMania 30, Brian joins the Wyatt Family 2.0 thing, but like a more sinister and like a real amped up side. But that means you've given Luke Harper the world because Luke Harper is just sitting at home... Is he collecting a paycheck? He Probably. is, yeah. They extended his contract so he wouldn't go to AEW. I, I would love to just get paid not to be on TV. It's amazing because a lot of people are like, Rhino is like one of those guys where he's like, I could just stay at home and get paid, but I don't want to. Like, I want to be doing stuff. Go to I want the gym. To. Go work out. No, but like, if you're getting paid bank just to sit at home, you can do a lot with that. But okay, that, that's something. Yeah. Good. All right. With that, I, okay, at first it was like, okay, is this Samoa Joe? Is it not? And then when you reveal that it isn't, it's like, okay, I kind of like that it's going in this whole Daniel Bryan direction. But who's this guy? It's still not revealed. And I, and, and maybe this is a buildup. Maybe it might be Luke Harper. Maybe they finally convinced him, like, hey, I know you want to leave. But we finally figured out a way for you to enjoy being here again. Maybe Eric, Eric Bischoff, Bischoff convinced yep, them. I was going to say. As he says, controversy creates cash. And the dude always knows how to make things like, oh my god. Like, like a holy shit moment, yeah. in other words. And the whole thing of like the fake looking Rowan and then it's not him and then Rowan actually was the one even though we still don't think it was Rowan because Daniel Bryan's like not convinced if it was Luke Harper I think I would like it just because you finally give him reason to come back you actually give him someone good with with Roman I I don't know like I mean did you like any of this Dan like I know you're toying around there but um, who would you have it be? Uh, I think the one perk that we got out of this whole thing was that Buddy Murphy finally got TV time. Yeah. And has been putting on excellent matches. Mm, look who he's doing it with, though. He had to do it with Roman and now Ali. Yeah, but he, he, he won over Brian. Matches. He won over Brian, too. Even though Roman almost beheaded him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about any of this one. Um, it feels like it could have been... You know what? I feel like this has gone the same way a lot of these go. Because they, they roll this out every once in a while. Where they're like, oh, somebody's the mysterious attacker. Yeah, like, it was me, Austin. It was me all along. Awesome. That and uh, the, the I did it for The Rock. and uh, I did it for the people. Didn't they try to crush Braun Strowman at one point with a, bear, with a thing? And it was Kane, supposedly, even though it wasn't. I forgot about that. Uh, and That's it, why. It it's just, becoming very forgettable. It, it's and, the same. and it's just a misfire every time. They try to do it, and it's like, oh, maybe this will be something, and then it ends up being boring, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, I, I'm just curious because Daniel Bryan is selling it really well right now. He yeah. was slapping the piss out of Rowan. Yeah. Imagine. But the whole time I'm like, maybe that's what he wants you to think. Um, I could I, I could see see this going one of two ways, and I like the idea of, of Harper getting brought back in for this. Because then you can either reunite those two, Harper and Rowan. Um, Daniel Bryan can manage them. 
Well, that's that's the one way to take it is you you kind of have this be the replacement Wyatt family, except you have it be the 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 vegan family or the planeteer uh, family. Yeah, the planeteers. That'd be fucking hilarious. Or um, the planetary fire. experience. No. Why? No more no experience. Vince. Yeah. No more experience names. Um, the vegan raiders. <laughs> And so I could, I could. More vegans. You could either have them come and just be his like little hipster uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, Aberdeen, Washington uh, enforcers. There's nothing driving. more pathetic than an ancient hipster. Or, or a hipster. you have Harper come back to essentially. Uh, Didn't even have Harper talk. What word did I want to say? Don't have anybody talk anymore. Please. Unless you're Liv Morgan. I miss Liv already. Uh, did we see that? What, the hair? The chopping of the hair? Yeah. No, I haven't. I'm going to go see why you guys discussed this Luke Harper thing. Um, I, I could see him coming back to... That's what it was. Vindicate um, Rowan. And then those two just splinter off again. And so then now suddenly Brian's on his own. Mm-hmm. And so he's got he's to gotta deal with the, the... Well, I mean, I guess... Meh. I don't know if you turn, I don't know if you turn Brian back to being a face. It's but too you, early. Well, and that's what I'm saying. But you could have him reluctantly then side with Roman for a few matches against those two. Oh, and then. And you have that, like, because that, and you lean into the betrayal thing. Right. And go, yeah. He turned on me. He partnered up with Luke Harper again, and they lied. It was they me, lied Roman. to me. And so then he uh, goes, of a bitch. So then he goes, "You want revenge on them? I want revenge on them. We should team up." <laughs> and so then those two fight those two, and then uh, at the end of it all, like you could have Roman, Roman and Brian stand tall over those two, and then Brian running knees him, and yeah. then that's the actual lead up right. to those two. And maybe the whole thing's a long, long con, even like. I think that would be an interesting swear for them to do. Is like Brian sells the whole thing. He's like, they lied to me. This is bullshit. You and I, we got to go beat them up. And then they go and they do the match and they beat the two of them. And then Brian hits the knee and then he realigns with both of them. And you're like, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Brian just standing on on the on the ramp. He goes, give me a microphone. Gotcha, bitch. And then they just walk. They walk backstage. Fickle, fickle, you fickle bitch. Um, Fitch. You know, most of the time when you're saying that, I almost went cross-eyed. What fickle bitch? No, or the whole, gotcha, bitch. The whole thing <laughs> leading up to gotcha, bitch. <laughs> it was that point your eyes went straight again. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Oh God. Um, but my thing is like, okay, I I like that. There, I kind of would want that to happen just because you throw so many curveballs at Roman to the point where he's like, and it's utilizing everyone. And he, yeah, and at one point, it, and he's like, almost, really burying Roman at this point. Can Roman be buried at this point? Not to irrelevance, yeah, but buried to a point where it's like you've been put up here for so long. It's time to bring you down. Well. Answer still that, keep Dan. You in the yeah. Middle. Answer that, Dan. So we get the Roman versus Brian match. What yeah. happens? Um. And how long do you keep this rivalry going between just those two? I think you you have those two face off for uh, I'd say probably two months. Uh, Brian picks has to pick up the first win. Okay. Uh, it's probably in dirty fashion. Okay. Um, possibly Roman with Harper. those two. Uh, causing the interference, and then Roman can can pick up the second the second match. Do you end the year this way with those four? Um, I feel like you'd have to throw some other ingredient into it, but I could I could see this. What month are we in? September. Yeah. yeah. So we haven't really gotten going yet. So um, three months. What's the What's the December pay per view typically? TLC. TLC. I could see it going to TLC. And a TLC I, match. Maybe. Yeah, but who does Roman get if you let's say make it three on one? That'd be unfair. He can get all like to show Roman's dominance, like put Harper through a table, attack Rowan with the ladder, and, and like, I think yeah. So you put Roman over at that point. Yeah, because then that leads into the Royal Rumble, where then you start to kick off WrestleMania. 
and you, I, I don't know if either of them finds themselves in a title picture going to WrestleMania. You might. Um, Stupid I, idea. If Ambrose was still in the company, would you at one point have it be the Shield versus, versus those three? Um, it would have worked if to either extend it or to end it, catapult it to like. I think, I think I think that the shield uh, at this point should always be a punctuation mark. I don't think that they should be a core story. Okay. Um, but that's my opinion. Um, if Ambrose ever returns, uh, I think it has to be you like you You're don't make Ambrose like be John Moxley as Dean Ambrose. Yeah. Not I, Dean Ambrose. Not watered back. down. Not Dean Ambrose back as Dean Ambrose. Yeah. But I, I think you would have to not talk about it. Don't bring him up. Don't mention him. Don't draw attention. Don't even talk about the shield. But you could do that bringing Roman Seth and Seth back together thing to if you deal with a bigger off. threat. And then you have like you don't have that bullshit, oh, and I called to get help thing that Seth did the one time and then Ambrose comes a out. Lunatic. Yeah. That was um, so bad. I think you just... I think if Seth said I call for help and you just heard the music, it would have been fine. I thought it should have happened at SummerSlam and then he comes back and betrays Seth and that's where you would lead the both of them. Well, that's what dude. everyone wanted, but of course, creative just ruined that for John. But yeah, I, I think if, if he ever comes back, you, ha- you just have him make the save abruptly. You don't talk about it. Yeah. You don't mention the shield. You don't say shit. And then suddenly, and everybody goes, what? Oh, my God. And that'll get a huge pop. That'll get a huge pop. The Fiend attacking Seth and Braun is going to get a huge pop. Um, Creative team, are you listening? Someone and is. Someone is listening. Is the, uh, uh, I, we like throw one, something uh, out there, and then it gets ripped here, off. Like a one out of the ten ideas we throw eventually comes to life. Nine out of the ten, it's like... Oh, those are great, but we can make it greater, but you make it shit. <laughs> Did I just hear a nine? You can catch all your favorite WWE right. programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. And it took an hour <laughs> for him to say Well, I said it in the beginning. Yeah, but you didn't mention it in the middle during... I, I, I thought we needed a break. Um, I, could, I could see um, if, if, they're, if they want to stretch... They want to stretch this story, which I th- honestly I think WWE might be starting to uh, peter out on the on Kofi, which is uh, which wow, is un- we went all the way back to that, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Well, because we're still like I'm trying to kind of wrap up the the world title stuff because we went off on a shield tangent there for a second, um, but it does tie in here because I could I could see Kofi and Roman potentially being one of your main events at Mania, or. The the match that match being the main event or one of them being one, a... no the two of those those two fighting being a co main event okay of WrestleMania because they always bill it that way they're like okay well we got the world title matches which are the two main events and then you've got the Undertaker if he's if he's wrestling well, the dude has and you got the four horsewomen if they're gonna show up um, but I I I think you you could you can go one of two ways and it's I think both are will be fine but Roman can fight for the WWE championship against either either Kofi or Randy I don't know who else you can really put those belts on right now over on Smackdown I wouldn't put the belt on Roman just yet I would take a while um if Kofi loses the championship maybe again maybe Randy yeah but right now it doesn't seem like there's anyone to really put the WWE title on. Yeah. Like, Drew. What about Shelton Benjamin? What about Shelton Benjamin? I don't know. He's on the screen. I just yeah, figured we'd still or, speculate. Or, I'm just throwing this out there. Hashtag there we go. push Cesaro. It led to all that. It started with that and Bring, it led all, all the way circle. back full circle. That's how the mind works. Well, I mean, I think we've kind of gone over the state of the WWE. The championships are kind of in a weird limbo place right now, but there's a lot of potential pieces on the board. Uh, Sasha Banks is, um, well, she's something. And uh, King of the Ring, still meaningless, even at the end of the (laughs) podcast. So, Still meaningless. So there you have it. There is the 
second or the middle yeah the second part of the state of the wwe address 2019 thank you so much for joining us and we will see you all next time